I'm Tom Grassi, a New York City comedian and diehard Green Bay Packers fan for almost 20 years. In 2015, I created a podcast where each week I talk to fans from opposing teams to share their story and to get yelled at for about an hour for being a Packers fan. Last year, I met amazing people and went to amazing places. And this year, I'm ready to do it all over again. Make no mistake about it, I will be remembered as a Packers fan. Enjoy the show. Grassy Posse Packer Nation, welcome to a brand new season of PackCast. I am your host, Tom Grassi. Thank you for tuning into the podcast where you don't need to be a Packers fan, but it sure does help. Now, you might be wondering right now, why am I watching Tom Grassi on YouTube. Like, Tom, I don't, I, the reason I listen to podcasts on SoundCloud and iTunes is so I don't have to actually see your face. Well, if you are watching this via YouTube, you have just discovered that every Tuesday episode that we do, it will be also broadcast on YouTube as well. Just so, you know, we could connect a little bit. You can see the Man Cave studio a little bit, uh, and I could look at your adorable faces. And by looking at your adorable face, I mean you just stare at me. Uh, so again, if you don't like what you see here or here or anything here, uh, just go back to SoundCloud and iTunes where podcasts will be continuously uploaded as it usually is. Now, we got lots to talk about. Uh, first episode of the new season, uh, barring, of course, the amazing, incredible uh, two-part interview I had with Packers president and CEO Mark Murphy from Lambeau Field. If for some reason you have not checked that out, there will be a link in the description, uh, or you could just check out the podcast uh, SoundCloud or iTunes. It's all up there. Part one and part two, I asked him some fan questions. Uh, I've been getting some phenomenal reception from both of those episodes. It was an absolute blast and pleasure to do them, uh, and we'll get into that shortly. After we talk about some uh, house cleaning stuff, I'm going to get all into my Lambeau field trip uh, and how extraordinary that really was. Um, so here's what the game plan is. Uh, if this is your first season of PatCast or first episode of PatCast, welcome. Thank you for coming. Uh, I hope you didn't stumble into the wrong place. Uh, if not, the, you, the usual is going to be going down. Tuesday and Thursday, we have episodes. Tuesday is going to be a recap of what goes on in the NFL, everything that's happening. I'll probably tell you about all my fantasy woes that is going on because I'm terrible at fantasy. Then on the Thursday, we will have the interview with a fan from the opposing team. Uh, so next Thursday, we'll start that off uh, with the Jaguars fan uh, in preparation for week one of the NFL, which we are less than two weeks away. I am so excited. I can't wait for football to finally be back in my life and actually mean something. But uh, getting down to the nitty gritty and what we have right now, I'm not going to go through all the scores and everything of what's going on in the league in preseason because no one really cares because uh, it's still preseason. Uh, I saw Tyler Eifert's been hurt, though. He's going to be out for four to six weeks. Of course, Tony Romo breaking a bone in his back. Never a good thing for Cowboys fans. My dad is crying. It's a very sad thing. Um, but the Packers, thankfully, have remained relatively healthy, and I am very, very thankful for that. Uh, they had a game against the 49ers in which the Packers won, which was a, a great look. Uh, Aaron Rodgers got some game time as well. They drove First series didn't go so well, but then they drove down. They scored. Uh, Eddie Lacy, who has been looking great this preseason, uh, not only facing the backlash from all of last year where he didn't really perform well. He did put on some weight, and everyone was saying, you know, he's weighing a lot and things like that. Uh, he really has looked great. He's slimmed down a little bit, that P90X, and he's been looking fantastic. He looks at form. Uh, he's been scoring a bunch of touchdowns and really has been uh, driving the ball well, and it is a contract year for him. Uh, so I'm expecting big things from Eddie Lacy. Uh, got pulled down by his hair during the 49ers game, is now uh, talking about getting a haircut which you know if that's a main story, uh, you know that it's preseason if we're talking about Eddie Lacy getting his hair cut. Uh, so there's that. Also, the Tim Matstay uh, and Mortel punters battle has come to an end as Mortel 
he has been released uh, early, so he is now free to sign with any other team. Uh, when I went to Lambeau Field, I mean, I, I saw Mortel, and he, he looked good. Um, the kind of talk that was coming in is that during practice, he really wasn't consistent. He looked good in the preseason games. Uh, usually, it was kind of alternating between Maste and Mortel of who would punt. Um but I mean, he was a great story, and uh, and you know, I was kind of I was kind of rooting for him because I have to say, Tim Maste has not been that great. He's not been a good punter uh, for the Packers. He's been shanking a lot of punts, and they go like thirty yards, and that's about it. So I'm hoping you know this kind of pulls Maste out of his funk. Maybe put a little challenge in him, as it did with Mason Crosby a couple years back when we got another kicker in, and then Mason Crosby's been fantastic. Mason Crosby used to be known as Shanksby. Uh, by the Packers fans, and now, thankfully, he is a very, very uh, consistent kicker. So there's that as well. Uh, there's also the wide receiver race, which we knew was going to be really, really big this year. Um, Devontae Adams has kind of been under fire um, because he's, for example, there was a, a bomb that uh, Joe Callahan threw, and he dropped literally right in the end zone. And I, I didn't think it was that easy of a catch, but um, the, the drops with Devontae Adams has been noticeable, uh, both by Packers fans and I, I believe the administration as well. And so this is it's going to come to a time where, you know, is it he's going to be released or, you know, because right now everyone's thinking that he's going to be their third wide receiver, but you have guys like Janice, like Aberderis, uh and other people coming in that really are contesting for that spot. I don't. I, I. A lot of people are calling for Devonte Adams' head, and it's not just because I have his autograph. But I, I feel like you gotta hold on to him. You know, he is a, a second round draft pick. Uh, you gotta hold on to him for at least a little bit. Let him develop. Let him, you know, really try. And you know, if he gets put in the doghouse for a couple games, he gets put in the doghouse, and maybe you know that'll get him time to get better. But um, I, I, I have hope for Devonte Adams. I, I really hope he he's has great height. He when he has hands, they're great. Uh, it's just he does he does have too many drops. And you know, then again, look at James Jones though. James Jones was a guy who like was riddled with drops. Um, but last year when we had literally no wide receiver, uh, James Jones came through in the clutch. So I'm hoping the same happens with Devonte Adams as well. Uh, speaking of Joe Callahan. Callahan's been looking really good this preseason. You haven't seen a lot of Hundley play uh, because of his injury, um, but Hundley actually played like one or two series when I was in Green Bay for the Raiders preseason game. Uh, and Joe Callahan, he looked uh, a little shaky, but he really put on a show against the 49ers, and he's been doing consistently well. So I have to think he's a minimum he's going to make the practice squad, uh, or depending on the severity of Brent Hundley's injury, he may wind up being their backup considering – we don't know what Brett's status is. So we'll see kind of how that goes. But I think everyone could be very happy for an undrafted guy like Joe Callahan, who's been playing pretty damn good during the preseason. Uh, my fantasy recap. So last year, if you haven't been following, so last year was by far my worst year in fantasy football. By far. Uh, I was in part of two teams, and I didn't make the playoffs in either. It was just god-awful. Well, I decided to essentially double down because this year I was invited to a bunch of leagues uh, after, after kind of talking about it so much last year. So I'm in five leagues this year. I did a 16 man league last night. That draft was so long. I could have put in the return, the fellowship of the ring, the extended edition. And I probably would have finished it and gotten to the two towers by the time we were out of like the 10th round. My good God, never again. So 16 man too much. And I did a 12 man PPR, which I've never done before with PPR. Uh, I'm pretty happy with it, but I also have three more drafts next week, so I don't know how that's going to go. Uh, I'll keep you updated on my miserable life when it comes to uh, fantasy football. Now, uh, talking about Lambeau Field. So if you were able to listen to the Mark Murphy interview, and I have to say, even if you're not a football fan, which if you aren't, I really I don't I don't know why you're here. That's awkward. Uh, if you're not a fan, if you're not a football fan, or if you're a diehard football fan of whatever team, uh, the Mark Murphy interview was really, really interesting because we didn't just talk about you know the Packers. We did talk about the Packers, but we talked about his life, what the draft was like for him. The Red, he has an amazing story. I won't spoil it for you, but the Redskins kind of like hiding him from the rest of the NFL so they can not really draft him, but keep him from getting drafted, which was great. Uh, listen to that story. The fan questions were great. Uh, Going to Lambeau was amazing. So this is my third year in a row 
going there for training camp. I went three years ago for the first time, and it was just an incredible experience. And I just saw a training camp. Uh, I got a bunch of autographs on a helmet that I have hanging up, and it was it was really really awesome. And then I went back last year, of course, for this as we did our first inaugural episode uh, from Lambeau Field in their new restaurant, 1919 Kitchen and Tap, which was amazing. Uh, and then this year, of course, meeting with Mark Murphy. And it really was just, every time I go to Green Bay, I am just so, like, it, it feels so home-like. It feels amazing to be there around so many different Packers fans. Um, and, and it's just, it's really, really awesome. So the day of the interview, uh, I, I walk over to Lambeau Field, and I go over to the desk, and I'm like, hey, I have, you know, I have an interview with Mark Murphy. And they go, oh, you're Tom Grassi. And I said, yeah. And so... I uh, gave him, you know, they gave me a little security pass, went to the elevator, checked in, and I go to this office, and I'm sitting there kind of waiting for the room to open up so I can set up all the interview equipment. And I'm sitting here, and right across from me, walking through this door, walking past me, is Mike McCarthy. Now, the inner fan inside of me just wanted to, like, jump up and be like, oh, my God, I love you. You're the greatest person. Uh, please hug me. Uh, but all that came out was, Good morning. And he was like, good morning. And I was like, mm, dying on the inside, dying on the inside. So that was fantastic. Uh, and then Dom Capers literally maybe three seconds later walked the other way. Uh, said good morning to him as well and got a good morning. So that was, uh, as a Packers fan, it was absolutely incredible. Uh, the interview was great uh, with Mark, of course, nicest guy. Um, and very, very thankful he gave us all field passes. So during the Raiders-Packers game right before, we went down, we watched everybody stretch, talked to Mark again, literally getting like this close to players and things like that. It was an incredible experience. And then we enjoyed the game about 10 rows uh, behind the Raiders bench. And uh, it, it was an amazing experience and one that I will definitely never forget. I would say once in a lifetime, but I'm hoping to do it many, many more times. So uh, check out those interviews if you haven't. I'm going to probably throw some pictures up as well uh, from my little kind of uh, adventure there at Lambeau Field. So really, really cool experience. Um, so that's uh, that's what's going on kind of in the PackCast world. Uh, I also have a video that's going to come out probably next week, whenever I get around to it. Uh, this place where I've been talking about where I do all my shows from, this is the Man Cave. Uh, a lot of you have been asking me to give you a tour of the Man Cave. What does it look like? Things like that. And I just ha honestly haven't gotten around to it. Um, but I did record some footage to kind of just give you a sense of where I am and not just this little space, even though this is a great little space. I got Nigel here, a good friend of mine, uh, and we got some memorabilia, which I go through. So, well, uh, that video, look for that video will be up uh, next week. Uh, Thursday, we're going to have a great episode uh, kind of detailing what's going to happen the last week of preseason. We're going to make some roster predictions as well. Uh, and then next Tuesday and Thursday, Thursday we'll have the Jaguars fan and uh, we'll be finally finished with preseason and ready for the regular season, which I am so excited for. So that's going to be absolutely fantastic. Uh, so again, also want to do a quick shout out and thank you to, again, Mark Murphy, his assistant Pat, and also the Packers subreddit, which if you haven't checked out yet, I uh, got a bunch of love from you guys uh, on there as well. So thank you for that. And we continue, I continue to be amazed uh, where all you listeners come from, because I have so many there. I've been looking at the stats and it's Russia, it's Germany, it's Canada, it's the UK. Uh, we had the Netherlands again, of course, is up there. Uh, we had New Zealand up there. And it's just really, really awesome that kind of this show has just gone so far beyond what I ever thought it would do, considering I'm just a guy in a basement kind of just talking to you. So uh, thank you so much for listening. And if, again, if this is one of your first shows, uh, first episodes or first season or what have you, thank you. Uh, so plugs, you can always find me at Tom Grassi Comedy on Twitter. That's what I reply to the most. So if you have any fan questions that you want me to answer during upcoming episodes, I will be happy to do that for you. Uh, so Tom Grassi Comedy uh, on Twitter, that's T-O-M-G-R-O-S-S-I Comedy, or TomGrassiComedy.com. You can check out everything I have there as well. Uh, PatCast, P-A-C-K-A-S-T on uh, Facebook, Twitter. We don't really even use that account, so don't worry about it. But if you want to follow it, I'm not going to judge you. Uh, so I'm looking forward to an, another amazing season. It's going to be fantastic. Thank you so much for watching and or listening, uh, and I will see you on Thursday. And as always... Go Pack Go.